Good morning. Good morning. How is everyone doing today? Well, I hope. Um, I'm doing better. It's hot, yes, but at least it's not as humid as it was, so, you know. This northern lady, she just gets a little warm some days, but anyway. We're so glad to have everyone here today, and if you're a visitor, welcome, welcome. And please make sure that you sign the attendance pads um, so that we can keep track of everybody. There's no meetings this week, yay! So, um, are there any other announcements this morning? Okay, let us now enjoy our a little video from our kids that went to camp. Please stand in favor.
morning will be number 384, Love Divine on Love's Excelling. Please remain standing.
Good morning, church. Good morning. It's good to see Chevy. It's Miss uh, uh, this lady up here. What's her name? Yeah. Denise. Denise. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just kidding. Denise has already uh, welcomed you, and I'm going to welcome you also, and hope that you're having a great week. Uh, our scripture reading today is Isaiah chapter 44, uh, verses 1 through 6. If you have your pew Bible with you and like to turn with us, we are reading from page 673. We'd also like to welcome those who are watching online today, too. Verse 6, let us hear God's word. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Why, who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from old, of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I've got a few prayer concerns I want to lift up this morning. You may have some as well. Uh, I want to remember up my uh, lift up my cousins. Husband. His name is Chet, and I want to say they're about maybe eight years younger than me, um, and he had a stroke this morning, and so he's uh, he's doing better. They, they uh, tended to him right when it happened. They gave him some medicine, the paramedics did, and he's he's almost back to 100%, and the young man, just, uh, just want to keep him in your prayers. His name is Chet. And I uh, also want to remember the family of Kay Parks McClellan passed away. Thank you for that information this morning. Remember that family. Are there other announcements or prayers? Uh, prayers, I'm sorry. Concerns? Are there joys? Walter Turner, who is this week? We survived the third week, <laughs> they didn't survive, but Walker did. Walker now will be going to get her license next week. Anyone else? Well, I think our kids had a great time, looks like, at camp. Um, thank you, Gary, for sending me those pictures. Somebody, they thought maybe I went near you went with them, but I said, no, I'm getting it straight from the back there. You can see them in the picture as fast as I can get them. I couldn't get them all loaded up. But it was good to see them. It made a made smile on your face to see the kids enjoying themselves. Thank you, church, for supporting them and sending them there. Glad to have our visitors here today. I want you to feel welcome. Anybody else have anything, joy or concern? I'd say it's always a joy to be able to walk in church on Sunday morning. Be alive, breathing the breath of life. Hear the beautiful music that's Karen plays and all of our other musicians, and to be able to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Y'all look so happy about that. Smile. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for this wonderful day you've given us. And God, we do remember the family that lost a loved one. I know, Lord, it's a tragic time for them. We just ask that you'd be with them, surround them with your love and mercy and grace. And God, also to be with these, we lifted up this week our children who have been to camp and they've had a great week. God, we just thank you for this instrument of faith we're allowed to use to, to further their understanding of you and what it is to be in the presence of other people who love you a lot. God, we thank you for this church and for its people and all the things that's, our Lord, done behind the scenes to keep the, the grounds looking great and to, to do the work in the church and, Lord, to reach out to others. We thank you for all those folks who have done great things this week. And Lord, as we worship you and as we praise you today and as we're very thankful and lift up one another, Lord, we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is going to be number 143 in your hymnal, On Eagle's Wings. We will play it twice through.
you know, and the awesome tattoo you got, all that cool stuff. Okay? Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for letting us be peacemakers in this world. Sometimes, Lord, we want to be agitators and we want to encourage uh, bad behavior. But God, help us be uh, peacemakers because that's what you call us to be. Just like Christ came to bring us a peace that like the world has never seen. And we thank you in the name of Christ. And amen. Yeah, and Miss Kate, uh, we've got the bags outside. Thank you all for being here. You practicing the tornado drill? Okay. <laughs> found out this morning from Brother John back there, he was telling me, I want to share a little bit of that, he said they had covered wagons at Cedar Crest when they first came there, and he was some of the original, not that you came in on the covered wagon, but, but he was telling me they was pilot program, he did the pilot program. And that's pretty neat, that's, I hope you get to get him to tell you that story, it's really good, I uh, think about how it all originated, so thank you John for being part of that, and our kids are really enjoying it. When I ask the ushers to come down to see a board offering. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for all the blessings you give us this day. We pause this morning, Lord, to give back a portion of our tithes and our offerings, Lord, to do the work of the church. May you bless the gift of the giver. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. <laughs> Today I'll be reading from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 25. It's on page 159 of the Pew Bible, if you'd like to turn with us. Let us hear God's word again.
So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will not. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, then heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know the whole creation has been groaning. We know the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. Not only the creation, but we ourselves. We have the first fruits of the Spirit, groaning innerly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We have really began to learn more and more about adoption as we are going through this with our own daughter. Uh, she adopts three children, her and her husband. And we know that in adoption there's a lot of, um, say, technicalities, loopholes, uh, restrictions, sometimes barriers to keep that adoption from happening. And some of you have gone through that may know more than I can pretend to know or have even tried to learn. But this adoption is something that is desired but sometimes hard to obtain. Now the adoption I'm talking about today, the spiritual adoption of God, is that He not only wants to have this adoption of us, but it will happen if we're willing to receive this great gift that He gives to us. I can't imagine what it must feel like to be orphaned. Now, I experience a little of it in this physical life when we lose a parent. We begin to feel what it's like not to be able to go to that person and share with them, talk with them. I don't know how many times this week uh, I walked out to my little miniature safari out here I've got now with my tomato plants. They're starting to grow so tall and everything. It's like a little safari. It uh, doesn't have any grass in it, but it has plants. And I, and I want to say, call my dad and say, Dad, I got these tomato plants growing. They're doing great. But said, this, this one's doing this on top, and I don't know about this. And the, and the Internet says I need to pull it and put it in the window and let it get green or put it out because it's starting to bust. And sure enough, if I do that, it works out fine. And I want to call him and tell him this, but he's not there some of you have lost your parents, you, you know that experience. And the older we get, the more that becomes a reality. And there's that separation, this fleshly separation from our biological parents. And in that situation, that, or, that time, we feel a little bit orphaned, don't we? We feel like there's something missing, something that does not complete us. Imagine that if you're a child and your parents, maybe had that option and they they let you go. They maybe thought you could have a better life or maybe for whatever situation they were in was not suitable for a child. It's a hard situation. 
It's a tragic situation. And kids like myself, we want our parents. We want to be able to say we can go and talk with them. We can know that we can lean on them. We know that they're there for us. And so the only other option is adoption. Adoptions where we take sometimes foster parents go and they keep the child with them. They keep them a good, safe place, a good environment, a good place that they can find a, a risk of care and they can be taken care of. And then hopefully, if that works out, then there is this adoption process where all the things begin to line up and things begin to happen and those children are given a, a forever home. Sometimes children want that adoption. Sometimes they don't. And I begin to think about why would they not want this adoption? Why would they not want that sound environment, that household where they could go and they could have a mom and a dad and they could have a, a parental situation that they knew they were in a structured environment and they were taken care of and they were clothed and they were fed, they were loved. Why would they not want that? And I found that some don't want that because they love uh, familiar things. You know, in life, there is pain that sometimes that is familiar. And you tolerate that because you're familiar with it. And that's what you're accustomed to. And so how do you do that? Well, this is what I've always done. This is what I've always been part of. And so I'm familiar with this. And so they stay in that situation. Domestic violence. We know that a lot of times uh, husbands and wives stay in situations because they're familiar with that. And that just, it doesn't seem right, but that's where they stay for whatever reason. And then there are children who want that adoption. They want to know what it feels like to be loved and cared for and nurtured and taken care of. And so those children, they are drawn to that time of adoption where they feel what they have desired for a whole life. As Christians, we are sometimes in that same situation because we have lived in sin and it is familiar to us and we want to stay in that because this is comfortable. It doesn't take us out of our familiar life that we have. And even though it may be painful and it may be a struggle, we stay in that and we, we, we just take those, that punishment and that brokenness and we live in that. It's not healthy, but we stay there. And then there's this opportunity where God has given us, the scripture talks about, it says, brothers and sisters, in verse 12, we are debtors, not to the old life of flesh, not to the fleshly life as we live according to flesh, because we know that will lead to death, but we are, are debtors to this new life led by the Spirit of God and we become the children of God. We are no longer to live in the slavery of sin. The Spirit of God, this gift, Jesus came and He died for us that we would not have to live in that familiar brokenness. That we would go into a new spirit of, as he said, adoption. To be adopted. To be in a family. To be accepted. To be appreciated. To be loved and missed when we're not at home. And, and to know that someone cares about us when we, when we cry and when we're hurting. When we suffer. Our parental God's, they suffer with us. When we have joy, they celebrate with us. And not only that, but God is the great Abba Father who says, not only are you my children, but you are the very spirit bearing witness of who I am. And that spirit that you bear reminds the world that you are not only heirs and adopted, but children of God. That should be something that we're excited about. Amen? Excited that we have been adopted. No matter what your physical spirit, or what your fleshly condition is, no matter what your parental condition is, mother, father, or whatever, God has stepped in and said, I am your father. 
I am the one who cares for you. I am the one that will be with you no matter what. And you don't have to have the fear of going back into that pain again. You don't have to settle for familiarity. But you can rejoice in knowing that you are heirs. Heirs of God. Not only heirs of one, but all joint heirs together with Christ. In fact, we suffer with Him so that we may also be glorified with Him. And then he goes on in verse 18, he said, I consider that the suffering of this present time are not even worth comparing to what the glory about to be revealed to us. What God has prepared for us is no comparison as He has adopted us. I think about adoption like uh, when God adopts us, it's like a, a grafting. And I'm learning more about this. I want to do more of this. Um, is when you graft a rose. You take something that's a base. It's a live base. Something that's that's uh, flourishing. And you take a, a, a stem of a rose and you graft it. You cut places and put it together. And you those uh, hormones or whatever are put on it. And you make sure it all comes together. And, and what happens? It begins to connect together. And it begins to grow. And then out of that, that little... Uh, that little standard that you have, that that uh, base that you have, and that that maybe that little stem you have that didn't look like much, it's just kind of broken and put together. It begins to produce this beautiful rose, and all these roses you see in Lowe's and Walmart and all these places, those are part of that grafting process where they begin to flourish and beautiful roses begin to bloom from them. And I think about the adoption process where God is the rock, the foundation. He is the one whom we go to. He is the foundation we start with. And out of that, He brings us in. He grafts us in to every part of the branch as the root. And He begins to let us be the branches. And before you know it, we have this bouquet of God's people. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? A bouquet of God's children. We are not only heirs and just existing, but we begin to flourish and we realize that we have been adopted by someone greater than us who loves us so much that he sent his own flesh to die for us. And now we are part of that bouquet of God's family. And we should celebrate that. We have been adopted. It's like at the court system when you see the judge is up there and he says, Day, he says to the children and to the parents, Today is a very special day. And today... You have got a new family. Today, we're going to make it official. You have been adopted. And these are your parents. They're going to care for you. They're going to love you. They're going to encourage you. And they're going to go to all your Little League ball games and your ballet processes and your dance recitals. And, and Dad's going to have to dance in the dance recital. And yeah, that happens. I was sick that day, praise the Lord. I'm not afraid of dancing, just not in front of nobody, right? They say dance like nobody's looking. They have to be not looking. But all those things are a part of the process, and, and, and that adoption is a wonderful thing. God wants to adopt you today. God wants to invite you into his family. You may be living in familiarity where you've been broken and hurting. You feel like nobody cares about you. You feel like you're alone. You feel like you're an orphan. God saw you all the way across the room and says, I want that one. I want you. And he goes through the process to make sure that he brings you into his family. He sent Jesus down for glory to walk among us, to be persecuted, to be even crucified. And now, our great and loving God has says, today's a great day. You now have a family. Today, if you feel like you're broken, you feel like that you're kind of orphaned, you feel like you're pushed out in the world, I want you to know you're heirs to a great God, a loving God. As the song says, the one who owns a cattle on the thousand hills, who owns all the valleys, who owns all the rainbows in the sky, he owns all the, the sunshine and the sunsets and the beautiful clouds, he owns all that, the rivers and streams. And he says, you can have this, it is yours too. Because it is mine, it is yours. We have been adopted.
And today I invite you to be part of the family. And if you are part of the family, then help us find others to come and be adopted as well. Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, how good it is to, Lord, be adopted by a wonderful Father who loves us like a mother who embraces us and brings us in and cares for us when the world would not. A Father that has given us direction and guidance on how we should live and, and to be there with us to show us the way. And the Spirit of adoption, the Holy Spirit that lives in us encourages us and reminds us that we are not alone. Thank you, dear God, for making us heirs, for grafting us in to the vine, that we are partakers of your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning, hymn number 694 in your hymnal, Come, ye thankful people, come. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Please stand, faithful. Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.